Right, year five. So, the gang are about to go back to school, and the mums and dads have told them to say no comment, remember? So, let's start off here. No comment, said Josie, grinning. No comment, said Michael, seriously. No comment, I said loudly. Good, said mum. Now, if anyone asks you why you went to Buckingham Palace, or what the police said to you, or anything about yesterday, you say... No comment, we all shouted, making all the people at the bus stop look over at us. My mum and Tom's mum and dad all smiled. Now there's a promise we want you all to make too, said mum. We want you all to promise us that you won't look at any newspapers today. We all looked at each other, frowning a little, but nodded. Promise, asked Tom's mum. Not a single newspaper. We promise, we all said, although I could see Josie had her fingers crossed behind her back. Excellent said Tom's dad, giving us all a thumbs up. Now we've spoken to Mrs Sanders this morning, said Tom's mum, and a teacher, probably Mrs Sanders herself, will be meeting you at the gates to make sure you don't get hounded by the odd reporter or two. He'll be taken straight to her office because she needs to have a few words with you all before lessons start. Oh no, cried out Michael. Are we all in trouble? Are my parents going to find out? It'll be fine, son, said Tom's dad patting Michael on the back. I promise. Now go on, have a good day, said Mum, as our bus came to a loud hissing stop in front of us. And we'll see you all tonight. You're all to come straight home, she said. We all nodded and waved and ran up to the top deck as usual. The other passengers looked at me and Tom with a frown before looking at their newspapers and then looking back, back at us again. We hurried past and sat together in a little huddle. In whispers, Josie and Michael told us about their day yesterday. It'd been exciting too. Josie said she'd have to make up a story involving a Chinese takeaway and endless buckets of puke to get Mrs Khan to believe I was sick but would be back the next day. And Michael had to pretend to lose his voice at that he didn't have to say anything to Mrs Khan when she asked him where Tom was. But of course, he had kept forgetting that he was meant to have lost his voice. So Josie had to kick him lots of times to make him remember. And then, when the police had rung to tell Mrs Saunders what had happened, she had come and taken them both out of the class and made them tell her everything. Uh, did Mrs Saunders say anything about giving us detention? asked Tom. Josie and Michael shook their heads, but Mrs Khan seemed upset, and Josie looked down. I feel bad for lying to her. Me too, said Michael. Maybe we should make her a card, said Josie. Yeah, and I've still got some of the Queen's biscuits left over. We can give her those for our tea, said Tom. But when we got to school, we forgot all about Mrs Carr because the school was surrounded by hundreds of bands of large round cellar satellite dishes on their roofs and lights and microphones and fluffy grey things on sticks. Staring at us were hundreds of cameras on legs, which looked like one-eyed insects that could zoom their eyes in and out and swivel their heads in any direction they wanted. And all of them had lots of people bobbing up and down behind them. As we walked towards the gates, a woman suddenly cried out, There they are! and started running towards us. I could see Mr Irons standing by the railings and looking at us. His eyes narrowed and his nose high in the air. His moustache was twitching. No comment, shouted Michael, as he began running towards the school gates. We all ran too, but before we could reach them, lots of cameras and arms and legs had surrounded us and were blocking our way. What message were you trying to send our government? Was this an act of protest on behalf of child refugees around the world? What was in the note? Who put you up to this? Where are you from? Where, in the, where were you born in this country? Would you like to tell us your story? Everywhere we looked, there were lenses and lights and loud clicking sounds. I clung on to Josie and Michael as the one-eyed machines all pushed in, us into a circle. I could hear Josie's breathing begin to wheeze. She doesn't like tight spaces. And my hands were beginning to sweat. Michael and me shouted, No comment! But I don't think anyone could hear us. Everybody stand, stand right back right now, came a cry. And just as suddenly as the scary cameras and reporters and microphones had surrounded us, they all instantly moved away and we could breathe again. No shame at all, shouted the same familiar voice which was getting closer and closer to us. How dare you harass my kids? We saw Mrs Sanders pushing past the cameras like a red-faced bull and reaching out her hand to us. Stay off school property, and if I see anyone near these kids again, I'll be calling the police and the Gut Queen's guards. Grabbing my hand, Mrs Sanders stormed back in through the school gates, pulling us like the trailing 
uh, tail of a kite behind her. She stopped briefly in front of Mr. Irons, who was now surrounded by the school doors. Mr. Irons, you were specifically instructed to wait and bring these children in safely. Where were you? Mr. Irons gave us a cold stare, his nose deadly quiet. I'm afraid I didn't see them, he said, his eyes narrowing even more and his moustache getting twitchier. You didn't see them? Stay here. I will speak to you later. Throwing open the door, school doors, Mrs. Sanders let us in and stopped to look down at us properly. She was angry than I could have ever seen her, and her whole face was the colour of an extra bright pink peach. Are you all okay? she asked. Her voice was back to normal voice now, but it was shaky. <gasps> so year five, we're going to leave it there. And tomorrow, I bet we're going to see Amit's reaction to all the drama that happened in London. Over and out, Miss Davis. <laughs>